We go through production design and wardrobe design in the same way that is character. You know, I write an eight to ten page biography for each actor, and then I give them to production design and, may, and wardrobe, and I say, how do we verbalize visually uh, uh, these things? Uh, like Lucille's uh, costumes are really tight, like a like a cocoon, you know, and Edith's have this some, sort of butterfly wing type of uh, shoulder pads, and uh, Thomas's. And, and Lucille are wearing ten year old, ten years older clothes than any other character. So it's a very subtle thing. The house tells you about who they are, who their parents were, how it sort of represents their mental decay and the decadence and all that. And this house, on the other hand, is very nouveau riche, is really straight line. So. You go at it from the character point of view, and then you lay layer of detail after layer of detail after, uh, to the point where you obsess about buttons, lace, paint jobs, you know, aging jobs on the on the wood and all that. It's important, for example, to have the real house, but it's also important to have the real ghosts, you know, actors in makeup, not just digital ghosts, and then add the digital layer that makes them translucent. At the same time, there is a, a thing that nobody asks about that is really great for me. When, when, when they push Mia from the top floor, it's a spoiler, but what the hell. You know, they push her, we really pushed the actress. And, and, and we did it for real. Again, I didn't want to shoot her against green screen, so we, we did it for real, and it was quite elaborate to, to see her fall. And, and I think any time you can give an audience the clue that things are real, that, that the mansion exists, that this is real, the machine is real, is good. The innocence, when I was a kid, that, that scared me. Night of the Living Dead, I was traumatized for life. I mean, I saw it and I couldn't, I, my, uh, two, I had two nightmares, both of which I become an edible object. One of them is sharks and the other one is zombies. And they always catch me at the end and I wake up right with the first or second bite. <laughs> Lately, uh, I love uh, Babadook. I love It Follows. You know, some of the smaller movies uh, have a, a very kinky, off-kilter kind of uh, universe that I that I find especially effective. I think that uh, I always will hold a, a secret moment that that was the last day of Cannes when Pan's Labyrinth, and uh, the press had left. Most of the press had left. It was the night we showed it, and all of a sudden we went into a 25-minute standing ovation, and and it's 25 minutes. This is what takes me to go from my house to work. And it, 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 it started really uncomfortable, like five minutes in. I, I started like clowning around and saying things. And Alfonso Cuaron was there and he slapped me in the back and he said, man, let it, let it flow. Don't, don't think about it, enjoy it. And I started sort of almost tearing up and, and, and really allowing it to happen. And it kept going and going. And I, I think that's, that's the best night of my career.